Hi, welcome to How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. Based on my book of the same name, this podcast is here to help you have the wedding of your dreams and not the wedding that other people are putting pressure on you to have. I'm Ross, I'm a wedding photographer, passionate about embracing diversity and equality in the wedding industry. And each week I'm going to be talking to different experts to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. So regardless of who you're marrying, where you're marrying and how old you're going to be when you get married, sit back, relax and find out how to have a wedding as individual as you are. Hello, welcome to another episode of How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are. Today we're going to be asking the question, what does a wedding look like? So we're going to challenge some of the preconceptions that many people have about weddings in order to empower you to think totally outside of the box, if you wish. Um, And I'm joined by the perfect guest to help me discuss and answer this question. And that is Carly Strawn. Uh, Now, Carly is from Tiny Weddings and Epic Elopements. So welcome, Carly. Thanks for joining me. We are talking via Skype, so I apologise if the sound quality isn't that great. And it is also the end of a long week. It's a Friday evening. So do bear with us, have a little bit of patience, but there is lots and lots of ideas, advice and information coming your way. So welcome Carly. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your business or businesses. Thank you. Um, I did think it's Friday evening, but I haven't started the margaritas yet. So Oh uh, that's good. That's good. (laughs) You're just missing you're missing out on the biscuits. Um, I usually have cake or biscuits when I meet in person. So make sure you do have a margarita as a as a little well done at the end yeah (laughs) (laughs) just to to feel like I'm not missing out yeah send me a picture (laughs) um so um about me wow I worked in well my first love when I left university and my first thing that I was going to do was I was going to go and work in uh magazines and I was going to write for a living um and I went and did work experience with a very famous Uh, journalist house shall we say that is very specialized in weddings Um, and it put me off being a journalist pretty much for life oh right (laughs) Uh, and I didn't return uh, uh, to journalism until I started kind of blogging about it and uh, you know the world has moved on a lot since I since I first started and when I was looking to get a career in kind of writing and um, I mean I'll come back to the blog in a minute but the, the world is very different now. People consume content in a totally different way. So that's kind of where I started. Okay. And then throughout my career, I've kind of come back to weddings time and time again. So um, I've worked in um, large events venues. I've done wedding fairs for large events venues. I was a wedding coordinator and a wedding planner for a little while. Um, but there were always big traditional weddings and big traditional venues. And I always say to people when they um, ask me about why I now am into elopement, say, because the thought of choosing tablecloth colours was the <laughs> thing that tipped me over the edge. <laughs> because I, I probably spent a good portion of my working career talking about tablecloth colours and what seat covers people wanted and whether they were going to have the three-piece band or the four-piece band. And I just, to me, that wasn't um, what I was into. I was into um, the the ceremony parts of the wedding and the stuff that I feel was important. And I found that the kind of the wedding industry, at least that I was working in, really wasn't there yet. We were still talking about 200 seat dining and silver service weddings. So it was a very different, it was a very different kettle fish. (laughs) And sort of glossing over the, the real reason you get married and the and the main focus of what it what it should be about absolutely yeah definitely I mean for for me the thing was is when I was um when I was an event planner for a big venue I did all sorts of events and there really wasn't that much different between our corporate dinners and our wedding dinners in the, in reality what we offered was very similar um and I felt that that was a little bit sad in some ways that, you know, the, the ceremony was beautiful and everyone had a great time. And I'm sure, you know, we delivered fab- absolutely fantastic weddings. Do not get me wrong. They were beautiful. Um, 
But to me, they, they really didn't have much personality. Um, and I think now what I see in the industry is people really expressing themselves. And, you know, some people do express themselves through 200-seater corporate dinners. That's fine. <laughs> no one is disagreeing with your right to. But it just wasn't it wasn't the thing for me. And no. So when he came to get married, uh, which I was adamant I would never do, like... <laughs> Um, to a lot of people are, I'm never getting married I'm never gonna you know just it's not my thing and then um me and my husband had, now husband had been together 10 years and we had a house together and we thought well you know what we want to we want to kind of cross that next threshold and we want to yeah. uh, get married and we just couldn't think of anything that really suited us it was quite um I, you know, I'm not the kind of person that wanted to go to big wedding fairs. I'm not the per- kind of person that wanted to take 20 people dress shopping with me. <laughs> it just wasn't, it wasn't my thing. So um, we had been to Vegas before um, and we loved it. We really like America generally. We, we go on holiday there a couple of times a year. Um, and we were pl- already planning to go back to L.A. Uh, in the September. This We started uh, looking in the February. Uh, we already had this trip planned, and I said, well, you know what, we're flying for 13 hours, and it's only another hour flight. We could go to Vegas, and we could get married in Vegas, and we wow. could just tack it on to our current holiday, <laughs> and kind of, wouldn't that just make more sense? Um, and so that was it. That was, that, was the, that was the start of our planning, was basically, that sounds simple, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so that and that was it. And yeah, I mean, we didn't tell anybody until um, we put a Facebook announcement out on the Wednesday before we got married on the the Wednesday, and we put a Facebook announcement out the Wednesday before, um, and just said, "Hey, we're getting on a plane now, and when we come back, we'll be married." Sorry about <laughs> oh, <I> that. Love it. <laughs> um, and see you later. And we we took a couple of friends with us. They were the only people that knew they were sworn to secrecy. Um, there was six of us all together, including me and my husband. Um, and we told my parents and my husband's parents just before, so maybe like okay. a week before that, just to make sure that you know they they weren't something disastrous wasn't going to happen, um, and we were going to really upset people. But I mean, our minds were made up. We nobody was surprised. I don't think when we told them, um, but we just decided it was it, it was too much like hard work to answer questions. To have to deal with why am I not invited? Who's invited? Blah blah blah. The politics, yeah. Yeah, so that was it. When that was our decision made, really, and I don't. I, I was saying I and people ask me all the time, like, do will will I regret it? Will I regret not having this big party? Will I regret not having my friends and family there? Will I regret not inviting my great aunt or my grandma or whoever? Um. And I mean, only you can answer that question. But I also think that I've interviewed probably, let, let's call it 50 plus couples who've eloped. And that's everything from, you know, people like me who have just, we had a t- very, very small wedding um, in a different country to people who literally have just got a taxi down to the registry office in the morning, married, gone to the pub in the evening and had, had dinner with their friends. So any anywhere on that spectrum and I've seen some fantastic elopements this is not about saving money or you know no, that was things. the point I was going to in make a small later on way, yeah by any means um and not but not a single bride or groom has said to me yet that they regret it not a single one fantastic and I find that really interesting because I I'm not going to say I've had people tell me they regret their weddings or they regret their marriage but that's a different matter <laughs> um, but I have had people say to me, "Oh, you know what? We wasted money on that, or we didn't need that, or actually it made no difference, or oh, I wish that hadn't happened." Yeah. When they've had a much bigger wedding, and I find that that quite interesting is that I'm, I'm still yet to find a, a bride or groom who will tell me that they really regret making that decision to 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 go away and have a small wedding of their own. And do it their way, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant, so we'll dive in a little bit deeper to some of that in a second, but um, just gonna go over what, what else we're gonna be covering today. So we're gonna help you to look at your wedding from a totally open-minded perspective and identify what your ideal marriage and wedding looks like. And we're 
Carly especially, more than me, is going to provide examples of how other couples have really made their wedding day their own and defied convention and pressure to conform. And I think there is a lot of pressure to conform, so we'll talk about yeah. that. Um, and we give some advice on finding supplies that will help you to have the small wedding or elopement that you dream of. So if you are listening to Carly talk and it all really resonates with you, um, then stay tuned because I think there's going to be lots of really useful advice for you. And even if you are erring on the side of a more traditional wedding, you know, it might just empower you to make those small changes or um, discard some of those um, aspects of a wedding that really don't resonate but you feel you still have to have for one reason or another. Um, and I think uh, what you said, Carly, when you first started talking about um, you didn't think uh, a marriage was for you and I spoke about this last week it's because when you think of a marriage you think of the wedding day and it's really important mm. to separate the two so you were put off or without putting words in your mouth you were put off getting married because you didn't like the thought of a traditional wedding so it's yeah, that association yeah. that Absolutely. people still make that you think oh that's not me I don't want to you know walk down the aisle in a in a suit or a white dress and exchange vows in front of all these people and and have this first dance and and all these things and and there's still that stereotype of that is marriage that's how marriage starts and and it's great to hear that there are more and more people that are saying no this is how we want to get married and this is how we want to start the celebration of our life together so you're the perfect person to be chatting to about this so Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course, go ahead. Um, So I can really feel like, you know, the passion you had for making uh, your wedding your own, your marriage your own. How did that lead to the business you've now got? Um, And tell us a little bit more about about that business and and what you can offer to couples. Yeah, so my... um... My main business is Epic Elopement. So if you're looking for me online, just look for Epic Elopement and you'll find me. There's only there's only me. Um, <laughs> and when I was and that was part of the problem, is when I was looking for inspiration, there really wasn't a lot that was aimed at, at me, I felt. I felt like if I wasn't taking ten bridesmaids dress shopping people really didn't want my money and if I wasn't buying a thousand pound dress which I mean I can't name one of my friends that has a dress a wedding dress more than around four or five hundred pounds now but that it just seemed to be the thing that I really struggled to find any sort of inspiration or any sort of market where people just weren't interested in well what's your budget for your wedding um I we didn't have a budget we everything we bought we just bought because we wanted it or because we liked it or we thought we needed it yeah um and actually the things that we purchased were were the stuff that i mean we could have turned up in jeans and a t-shirt and and there would have been no problems with that and i I still will kind of fight for people's rights to (laughs) you don't even you know a wedding is not any less legal because you don't wear a suit and a dress exactly exactly Exactly. no laws against that um but you know i wanted to wear a dress i wanted to feel special and my husband wanted um special clothes for him but things um that we kind of spent money on were stuff that meant something to us it wasn't things that i mean one of the things i did do after i got married and i started blogging about eloping was I went to a, a really big wedding fair, huge wedding. And like I say, I used to manage wedding fairs, so I've been to enough of them, but I never kind of on the on the purchaser side. And um, I just felt really disheartened. Yeah, and I've been I there. Just, yeah. I felt like <laughs> everything was the same, um, especially in the really big ones where it's quite hard for smaller businesses and more niche businesses to get their message across. And, you know, if you are... Um, a photographer who will come and happily take do two hours with a couple because they don't need 10 hours of coverage you're probably not in a position to be buying a two thousand pound stand at a big wedding fair so you're not finding those really great little suppliers that help you out when you don't want that whole big shebang so I just felt very much like there wasn't really a a space for me in the wedding market no Um, and um that's you know at the start of my book that was one of the things that inspired my book and sort of shaped my business was that I went to a wedding fair 
just for research, actually, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't getting married, but, you know, the way I was spoken to and the visuals that were on display just didn't resonate with me at all. That People made so many assumptions, you know, that I would, if I had got married, I'd be marrying a woman, which I wouldn't. I've been with my boyfriend for 10 years, so that wouldn't happen. But there was nothing there to suggest anyone had even thought of catering to same-sex couples. Um, and then you look a little deeper and you think, well, where are, where are the older brides and where are the, you know, people of different faith and different ethnicities? Yeah. And it was, you know, this was in London, so it wasn't, you know, a, yeah. a small country. We're not talking about... Uh... Yeah, some somewhere where it's not progressive and it's no. Not, so yeah, I, I really get that that it can be so frustrating um, at a wedding fair, and and it's I suppose a wedding fair is also a reflection of the the wider wedding industry or wedding media itself that it is so restrictive um, that you know that's why it's great that we're talking to you because without people like you doing what you do, people don't realise that they're able to do whatever they want because nobody is, is sending that message to them. Yeah, and I think that was definitely what then drove me to write about it, was that when we came home and we told people what we'd done or, you know, people... I'd get introduced by my friends to people at parties and they'd be like, oh, this is my friend Carly. You've probably seen her wedding pictures because people, you know, my wedding pictures are quite unusual and you'll see them if you come to my blog. They were very specifically what I wanted and I found someone who would take those specific photos. Um, but, you know, people, everybody I met was just like, how did you do this? How did you know you could do this? I mean, it's not unusual that people get married in Vegas. I think they do something like a, a thousand weddings a day or it's ridiculous. Wow. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of weddings. And, um, but, you know, or, or they make kind of strange assumptions about it, like, oh, you must have been married by Elvis, or <laughs> you must, you know, your your wedding's not real was a lot of the things. Oh, you know, really? Like, it's not valid and it's back. not... Oh, yeah, that, you know, oh, but it's not legal. No, my, my wedding's totally legal. <laughs> it's actually easier as a British person to be married in America in most states than it is for me to be married in England. It takes wow. less time, it's less expensive. <laughs> it, it's incredible. And so I, I kind of came across a lot of, people weren't necessarily negative, but I, and I'm, I'm sure you probably found the same when you went to wedding fairs, is that the minute you step outside of that norm, people don't mean to be negative, but they get quite defensive quite quickly. Yeah, and it's and just so, the assumptions as well, isn't it? They yeah. can't see you... If you do one thing or you're one type of person, I mean, a lot, for me, a lot of my experience is being gay and having a same-sex relationship, but, you know, you say one thing and then they go, oh, I assume you must like this, or, oh, I photographed a couple like you, or, or I worked with a couple and they did this, and I think, well, I don't want to. Just because I've got that one thing in common or I did that one thing, don't, you know, after five minutes of meeting me, assume that you know yeah. everything else about how I would get married or what I want from life, so... Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, that that kind of, again, it, it's not negativity, but there's, it does come across, people do get quite defensive quite quickly, and if they, they find themselves on, you know, it's kind of uneven footing almost, they can, some, some suppliers I found would be quite aggressive about it, so, you know, I've had people say, well, when I've been talking about people going to America to get married, or whatever it might be, and people, um, suppliers from England that I know, who have become quite defensive about it. Well, you could do that in England. You could do, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, well, yeah, I mean, you probably could. No one's saying you can't. I'm just saying in some cases, this is, this. you know, we should be allowing people to explore all their options. And don't Absolutely. forget, you know, the wedding industry is massive. If, if you can't find it in the wedding industry, then you're asking for something that really has never existed because... There will always be a supplier who will help you. Not even a wedding supplier, just someone. Yeah. But it just takes longer to find them. And yeah, that's and, that, and that is something that I've said previously, that, you know, just because you can't see evidence of a wedding that you want, so that your dream wedding, you can't see a blog on it or you can't see it in the media, doesn't mean it's not possible. It doesn't mean there aren't yeah. suppliers out there to help you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think... I mean, even me, I'm, I would say I'm particularly open-minded about 
um, most things, you know, I'm certainly not someone who is, is easily shocked. And when I started looking at kind of alternative wedding setup and, and kind of if you could work with celebrants and like what's a legal marriage versus what's not a legal marriage and all this sort of stuff. And I, I um, found a, I hasten to say couple because it's not a couple, but um, a polygamous marriage okay. um, where they were in a polygamous relationship and, and people were, you know, outright refusing to conduct their ceremony. And I, you know, I, I, again, each to their own. If you're a wedding supplier and you don't want to serve people, that's fine because you'll go out of business one day. Yeah. Because the world will change and you won't change with it. Yeah, you're not and keeping up with modern life at the end of the day. Yeah, there will always be something that you go, wow, I've never seen that before, or that's totally different, or, you know, oh, I just didn't even know that that was a thing. But if, if it's something that you want to celebrate in your life, you will find someone to celebrate it with you. Yes, <laughs> yes. You. So do I you thought, have any tips for finding those suppliers, where to start looking you know whether online or yeah so um my, my first stop really was like most brides was pinterest pinterest is brilliant um and it's very useful for searching weird niche hashtags so try variations of what you think it is that you're looking for so um i'm trying to think when i was looking for a dress for example i didn't i didn't want a wedding dress so Every, when I first started looking for something that I wanted to wear to my wedding, I mean, I just didn't know what to search for because it's like, well, I'm not looking for a wedding dress, but no. I can't search the internet for a dress. <laughs> I'd like a dress piece, internet. Um, so I started thinking, right, okay, well, what, what does it look like? What shape is it? What does it, you know, what material is it made from? And I think that's really the way to search is more about the minute you put the word wedding in, I was there's say, yeah. assumptions that come with it. Yeah. So leave those words out because people will infer those words from the other things that you're searching for. So if you are looking for um, like a beach ceremony, for example, um, search for, you know, hashtag couple on beach or hashtag um, beach ceremony rather than beach wedding because you'll find different things. You'll find different ways of how people talk about their product yeah. and how people talk about themselves um, I found our photographer, for example, by just searching um, Las Vegas photographer by the hour. Um, oh, okay. Because I didn't want a wedding photographer. Because having searched Las Vegas wedding photographer, I found some really quite terrible photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, the mind and, boggles, you know, yeah. And, and I think, again, if that's your bag and that's the thing you want to do, then go ahead and you know we went and did some of the the big um iconic places we went to the vegas sign and had our photos taken there and all that kind of stuff and of course pretty much every las vegas wedding photographer's gonna know the big places yes but we went and played in an arcade for an hour we went and wow. played um arcade games and that was something we wanted to do and i wanted a photographer to come with us and i thought if i look for a wedding photographer they're going to have no clue no. <laughs> what I'm talking about. So we, we found a photographer that would we would just charge by the hour. We told him how many hours we wanted, and we said, this is what we're after. Um, and, and he was really good. He knew Las Vegas like the back of his hand. And I think finding those people that have a passion for it is easier if you maybe take the kind of ad words out of it. So, you know, there's going to be things that people will pay for because it makes them a lot of money. So Google AdWords for Las Vegas wedding photographer, you're going to find the people who do the same thing day in, day out, yeah. charge a fortune, um, because they're paying for the privilege of being at the top of those Google rankings. Yes. Um, whereas photography by the hour, the guy just wants to work. Yeah. <laughs> and I so, think with, so with he's wedding... He's not making a million pounds out of this a no. year. He's just working yeah that's very true and i think you know the, you're talking about weddings that are inspired by again priorities and what's important to you and your life and and your yeah. um interests so um you want suppliers that are also inspired by that and not simply by what other suppliers in the industry are doing i think yeah. and i think a lot of people just sort of 
look around at each other at you know what the photographer down the road is doing or the florist or and I've seen yeah. that before and you know you you want to work with people that stand alone and and are proud to be different and proud to do something different and yeah I think that's really good advice with the with the hashtags and not just tagging wedding onto the end because it it does suddenly limit what you see and it and yeah. I know we spoke. Uh, before we recorded the podcast last week about you know it was hard to sort of find the promotional material uh, for your wedding fair which we'll touch on in a second um, because you kind of have to have a certain image so people know it's related to weddings but then as soon as you do that you're part of the problem of defining what a wedding yeah. is and so yeah, yeah it's it's a tricky one and, and it is a fine line I say I think you know there's certain things where if you're looking for a celebrant, for example, if you want a celebrant-led wedding, there's not a great deal you can do to not find people involved in weddings because they don't do other things. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. you know, um, and again, if you're looking for a specific type of car, maybe don't go for a wedding car supplier, but look for a local um, car club or people that hire out vintage vehicles. Yeah, things like or that. classic cars, but, yeah, absolutely. But if you're looking for a wedding car, you know, that that is your idea of then of course you're going to find, you know, what what that kind of looks like because it's very difficult to say, I want, you know, I could go and find um, a Volkswagen um, camper van, for example, and say, well, I want one of those to take me to my ceremony. But there's going to be a difference between me just renting a Volkswagen camper van that is set up for people camping in <laughs> versus one that is, you know, with, uh, you know, set up in a different way, is much more glamorous, is much more, you know, geared towards a more traditional wedding yeah wedding itself isn't particularly traditional um but there you know there is subtle differences in kind of what you'll end up getting um but you know what if you're cool and you want to camp in it great yeah (laughs) yeah totally salute your your right to do that yeah but (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) and not just not just the product itself the the guy you know if someone's going to drive it for you or or whoever it is If they don't work in the wedding industry, they probably won't be, you know, and I like to think of myself as quite a flexible supplier and I, and I try and network with other people that, you know, are client-led and, and you know, yeah. d- don't sort of stick to routine. But like you say, if you're looking for someone that's not necessarily a wedding chauffeur, they might be a bit more open-minded about timings or how long you can hire it for or, you know, yeah. the minimum journey or and, and things like that. So it is, it is very true if you're totally going away from that traditional wedding and then you know embrace all sorts of professionals to help to help you do that so that's fun, fantastic advice um we touched on wedding fairs and you've got um a wedding fair coming up that you're organizing so tell everyone a little bit about that wedding fair um what it's called where it is um and what it's all about so it is a tiny weddings fair um we struggled for a long time with naming it because very similar to the conversation we were just having, it's actually really difficult to describe a wedding that's not a wedding yeah. um, or, you know, isn't a 200-seater corporate event. Um, so when we were discussing it, you know, we were looking at intimate weddings and small weddings and small ceremonies and elopements and destination weddings and, you know, ha- trying to find a way to capture that. And then we were having a discussion one day and I just, you know, we... We kind of were, were, again, playing around with hashtags on Instagram and hashtags on Pinterest and just trying to find what people were talking about. Um, And Tiny Weddings kept coming up. So Tiny Weddings uh, became our name. Um, And it's really about just getting away from, in the same way as my blog did uh, when I started that three years ago, really just trying to, to make a space in the market for people who want something different. Yeah. Because... Like I said, my wedding was six of us all together, including me and my husband. Um, we were, you know, we had a lovely dinner together. Don't get me wrong, we, but you know, we weren't hiring tablecloths and tables and chairs and cutlery, etc. We just went to a really nice restaurant. So that's the kind of thing with tiny weddings that we were trying to get to is, you know, don't discount the normal stuff, but just maybe try and gather some suppliers together who have a bit of an affinity for doing something different. So we've got um, 
photographers, for example, who are used to traveling, so will travel to destinations, who are used to doing a lot of outdoor work. So okay. um, people who want to go hiking or want to, you know, get up super early and be, have their ceremony at sunrise on the beach somewhere. And wow. um, so kind of photographers who are a little bit more adventurous yeah. um, than kind of your standard, um, you know, we, we start at, at eight when the bride starts getting ready, ceremonies at two, and then we go to the reception and we finish at 10 or whatever it might yeah. be. Um, we've got some um, suppliers who do uh, small batches of food, so things like food trucks and drinks um, trucks, but for people where they maybe have kind of 20 to 30 guests rather than 100 guests. So people who are, um, again, because we're looking for quite small independent suppliers, don't have the minimum overheads to meet because they it's no. just them. Yeah. You know, it's them and their business. So a lot of our businesses are... Um, of, of quite small suppliers in their own right as well, which is nice. Um, and then we've got people who plan weddings um, as well. So a lot of wedding planners that are very specific. So um, I'll be there, I'll be talking about um, Las Vegas and some of the American cities that um, I work with. I have some partners um, through Epic Elopement who um, do wedding planning in Colorado and Hawaii and all over. Um, We've got uh, Wedding Central Park, who, as you can probably tell from the name, is joining us to talk about Central Park weddings in New York. Um, we have um, a an officiant from Paris. Um, it's very difficult to get married in Europe legally, um, but she does a lot of um, ceremonies under the Eiffel Tower, for example, oh, wow. or outside Notre Dame, or at sunrise on the Pyramid in the Louvre. Um, fantastic. I mean, they are really, truly beautiful ceremonies. I really small, imagine. really private, yeah. um, really, really pretty. Um, so, yeah, so we've got lots of kind of varied suppliers doing lots of different things, um, depending on kind of what you're looking for. And I say some of those suppliers are, we will come and we'll do um, a trash the dress shoot with you. You maybe just have, you know, a... Um, a small um, wedding and reception, but you want to do a shoot two weeks later. Um, you know, maybe you, you and your your um, new husband, new wife, want to go and kind of hike in the woods and get in waterfalls and you know to do something different. Yeah, so that means something to you. Yeah, we've kind of got a lot of, of um, suppliers kind of in that vein as well to just say, you know what, if you're looking for something and you're looking for some open-minded suppliers to just kind of have a chat with, that's cool. We've got um, some wedding kind of dresses as well in terms of you might only be having a very intimate ceremony, but maybe you want to have a Bedouin tent in the, in the forest somewhere. Okay. So kind of venue dressing um, and and some party um supplies as well in terms of because some people will elope for example and then come back and have a party later okay. on okay well but not necessarily kind of a wedding reception if you if if that makes sense so you know more of a buffet and a yeah and then um, and an after party rather than a sit-down meal etc so formal, formal yeah, traditional it's, it's yeah interesting i think and instead of the because again we we don't want to become that wedding fair that excludes everyone else involved in the wedding. So, you know, one of the, the things I had was that my husband just outright refused to come to a wedding fair because he, <laughs> just, he was just like, I don't, it, this is not aimed at me. They, it is not a wedding fair. It is a, it is a bridal fair. Yeah. And there's a very different thing about that. So we've kind of eschewed the more bridal elements. Um, so we've got no catwalk. We've got, uh, we've got some dress suppliers, but they are unusual um, in their own right. So things like um, a lot more kind of tea length dresses, some jumpsuits, some more um, travel friendly dresses, some lighter things for beachwear, etc. Um, and so we, we're not having a catwalk. What we're doing instead is we're having talks so people can come along and hear about the legalities of getting married in Las Vegas. Or, you know, how how um, easy it is to have a ceremony in France if you do the legal part in England. So kind of making it actually a useful day rather than just a nice day out to have with your bridesmaids. Which, again, there's plenty of fairs that cater for that. Yeah. We, you know, if if you want to do both, that's cool too. But, we you know, we really like people to come along and kind of 
go away having learned something. Absolutely. Or maybe inspired. Fantastic. So just remind everyone of the date and the location, just so um, they know where to go. It is Sunday, September 30th. We're um, in High Wycombe in the Swan Theatre. Again, we went for, whilst they do host uh, weddings, we went for a location that wasn't particularly wedding-y. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, it's actually held in the theatre, and I mean, it's a beautiful theatre. Um, but yeah, we, we tried to kind of get away from, again, a traditional wedding venue. Yeah. We wanted to do somewhere that was a little bit different. Um, and we are Tiny Weddings Fair, and you can find tickets on Eventbrite. So if you want to come along and join us, um, come and grab some tickets, because they, they're going fast. And we have um, goodie bags for the first 100 people that sign up online. So um, ideally, you, you want to be in that first 100. So Fantastic, yeah. They're not going to last tickets. much longer. <laughs> No, that's brilliant. So we've covered pretty much everything we were going to cover, which is great. We'll do a little uh, roundup in a second. But one thing, um, you've kind of um, given some examples, but some examples of some of the uh, epic elopements that you've um, had an involvement in, or some examples of really out there weddings just to inspire our listeners. Yeah, so I kind of went again for the... The, I went through my blog and I thought, who are the couples that really kind of stand out to me? And I think they're all, spe- you know, every single wedding on my blog is very different. <laughs> Even the ones that you think would be very similar are very different. Okay. Um, I, think, I think that's kind of a joy to behold because it does show you actually what you can do with yeah. free reign. Um, my, and so I went for, there's um, one of my favorites, which is uh, Madison and Troy. Madison and Troy, Madison... Um, contacted me and basically said we got married on um this which way around was it the 11th of july um, and four months later my husband came back from his tour of duty he's in the um american military okay so um they came back from his tour of duty on the 11th on the, the 7th of november which is kind of the opposite date the 7th of the 11th okay the 11th. yeah we then told everybody <laughs> and we've had a wedding photo shoot and um, so they had this wedding and they told literally one person <laughs> because they needed a witness but he was due to go on this tour with the, with his military envoy and she, she just said I, I want to be married I, before you go away I want to get married and so he came home from work in the morning came back from his from his office and they literally went to the courthouse she went out and bought a dress that day <laughs> wow. they went to the courthouse with a friend um, and did the legalities. And then four months later, when he came home, they um, had a little party and they had a photo shoot and got to wear their... Um, she still went with a very alternative dress, actually. I love it. She looks like Marilyn Monroe. She's so beautiful. Oh, wow. And um, they're such a cute, cute couple. But honestly, like, they're, they're just adorable. But I, I love that story of just being like, you know what? We don't want to wait and we have no reason to. Um, so let's just do it. And I think what a Fantastic. great... What yeah. a great no fuss, no you know, no trauma. Just, just we're gonna do it. it. We're gonna get married. Um, and I love. I think it's, it's very very sweet. Um, and then kind of the opposite end of that, or actually, let's hold that one for a second. We'll come to the opposite end. There's another one. Um, Kayla and, and Jacob are another couple that I I interviewed, and I actually they had a really um, terrible time. They uh, unfortunately lost their child, um, and as part of kind of the grieving process decided that actually they, they already had a, a, a child from earlier in their relationship and decided that they would they wanted to to um, kind of make their family feel a little bit more whole and decided actually they wanted to get married um, but with the, the stress of kind of everything that happened decided that actually planning a big wedding it, it, they were finding it really difficult too to, much to get. yeah that's understandable yeah, um, and so actually they went, they found a little winery, they drove across Texas, so they drove for six hours to this winery, they brewed their own wine, oh, um, wow. and they, they, as part of their ceremony, they poured out their wine together, um, and now they have this wine that essentially, you know, they've made on their wedding day, and I love that because I think that's a real, it's a really beautiful story, and it's very sad, but I think there's a lot of people who especially in you know if, if you're planning a wedding for two years something 
is going to happen in that time probably that causes you a little bit of pain or a little bit of grief. It's very true, yeah. And continuing to plan through grief is really quite difficult. Um, and I think a lot of people will recognise that, you know, if they've lost a grandparent who they thought would be there the day they got married or whatever, I think um, that's quite hard for a lot of people as well. And I totally. find that a lot of couples say, you know, without this person at my big wedding, the big wedding just doesn't just doesn't matter to me anymore. So we, you know, and, or or it doesn't feel right to be having this big party when we've lost somebody, um, and therefore we want something that's a bit more private, a bit more intimate, um, and you know that that kind of absolves our grief a little bit, makes us feel a little bit more whole. And I yeah. think they were really they were really beautiful couple. So go on the blog and read because it's it, they're great. Um, and then the 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 kind of when I said before, there's people who go oh, you know what, we just, we're going to elope or we're going to have a really small wedding and it's going to save us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> my, probably the, my favourite couple, and I still I still speak to them now, <clears throat> um, on the blog, you have to go and read it. They worked out what their wedding budget was, <clears throat> and on average in the UK, that's about £27,000. And they decided for £27,000, you could do a lot more <laughs> Absolutely. Day. Um so they started in Hong Kong. <laughs> they had a wedding ceremony in Hong Kong. Um with uh, I think about 20 of their friends and family went for the day. They hired a um a tram to take them around the city. They had a big party. They um had a photographer for the day. They had a wedding in Hong Kong. Wow. And um, but it was a small wedding. Um and then they flew to Las Vegas <laughs> and they eloped in the desert in Las Vegas and had a ceremony in the desert in Las Vegas. <laughs> and then they went to New York <laughs> and they had a ceremony on the High Line in New York. Oh, New York. fabulous. And some of their friends joined them because they used to live in New York. Um, and then they went to Japan. Um, they had literally had a world tour that wedding. That sounds amazing, it, yeah. And just think, actually, when I think about people spending, I mean, I... I'm a real, one of the things behind mine was the, the kind of, the thought of spending £27,000 in one day gave me heart palpitations. <laughs> um, but suddenly you say, well, these, these guys had four months off work. They literally had the trip of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what and memories they, they know, created in that time. Life. Yeah, and they, they, they travel a lot. They, tra they blog about travelling. So, you know, for them it was a big part of who they were as a couple. And they had friends all over the world. And they just thought... If we have a wedding in England, or if we have a wedding in New York, or if we have it in Hong Kong, not everyone's going to be able to come. So we'll take the wedding to them. <laughs> and I think that is a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> and totally. If, if anyone else is interested in that, please hit me up, because I would love to help you plan it. Um, I Honestly, like, they, they are my absolute wedding heroes. I think that is... There's either way, either say, you know what, we're not going to spend it, or we're going to spend it, and we're going to spend it properly. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And I think those are three brilliant examples, and to some people they might be um, exactly what they want, or they might be too extreme, but I think we've done what we've said and opened people's minds, so you know they can they can totally go away and travel and do it, or they can keep it really small, or they can have elements of a traditional and totally go off kilter for the other half of the day or or whatever they want to do so i think you've really helped people hopefully i think you must have mm -hmm. to really you know realize what is available and that the sky's the limit literally um so thank you you've been absolutely fantastic we'll just do a little summary of some of the some of the tips and advice you've given so if you're thinking of having a wedding that is really different um use hashtags differently don't necessarily use the word wedding in your hashtags or your searches online to to find suppliers um that's a really really good tip um go to the tiny wedding fair it sounds fantastic so again that's on the 30th of september and carly will give you all the information again in a second and all links to her blog um don't feel pressure i say this in nearly every podcast i record but don't feel pressure to conform if it doesn't resonate with you and if you don't see evidence of the wedding you want um, keep looking because there are suppliers out there that will help you and again we've given you some tips on how to find those suppliers so um, thanks again Carly 
Um, the one thing I always ask guests to do is to um, give us one thing they wish somebody had told told them before they got married. So for you, it might not apply so much because you, from the start, you did things your way. Um, most of the people I speak to have a more traditional wedding, so there's usually some sort of regret or information based on that. But is there anything you would say, one sort of tip or advice for people that um, are planning to get married and sort of don't know where to start? Yeah, um, I think my... And it, again, like I say, it is not a regret because we did everything we wanted. But um, I say this to brides all the time when they're talking um, and, and grooms about um, hiring photographers by the hour, especially because it's something that I talk to couples about quite regularly, especially when they're traveling, is I would always book people for twice as long as you think you want them. We thought that we would be really quite bored by, we had a photographer for three hours and we thought we would be bored by the end and literally he couldn't stay long enough to we were having such a good time <laughs> so yeah great if, you, if you're thinking yeah if you're thinking about limiting something on the day just give yourself some extra leeway because I kind of there was things that we didn't get round to taking photos of things we did after the photographer had left that I wish we had photos of yeah um and I think that applies to every wedding in terms of things take longer or, yeah. you know, don't yeah. think you can kind of get things done in an instant. It, things even, you know, your wedding was very different, but even so, you know, you've got, you know, that advice sort of will resonate with yeah. all sorts of, of married couples who felt the time just flew and they had a lovely time and then they wish they'd, you know, had longer with certain suppliers or certain aspects of their wedding. So, yeah, great tip. That's a really good tip. But yeah, I tell you that again, like all, all the other couples I've interviewed, I have no regrets about eloping. And I if I had to do it again I would I would do it exactly the same way. Fantastic. <laughs> so, um just remind everyone, um your businesses, where they can find you, social media, blogs, give us all the info, get your plug in. <laughs> Perfect. And um, so you can find me like say at Epic Elopement. So it's epicelopement.co.uk. Um, all my information is on there. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Um, Instagram is probably where I hang out the most. So if you want assistance, then DM me through there. Um, all my my contact information is on the website. And our wedding fair, if you want to come and see me in person, um, I promise to to try and be as kind of helpful as I can be um, to any couple that want advice or or kind of want to ask questions on the day. Um, then come and find us. We're at Tiny Weddings Fair and it's High Wickham and you can find it on Ventbrite. Um, and again, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, so you should be able to find us anywhere you look. Brilliant. Thank you again, Carly. As ever, I'm Ross Wilshire. You can find me on www.rosswilshirephotography.co.uk and the book, How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, is out now and you can get that on Amazon or Waterstones online, um, or if you want a signed copy, or you want to chat anything weddings or podcasts, you can email info at rosswalshphotography.co.uk, and I'm on all the social media platforms, so just pop in Ross Wilshire and you'll find me there. But thanks again to Carly, we'll be back um, very shortly with some more tips and advice, but until then, happy wedding planning. Mm-hmm.